first we're going to go to Class Dojo. And um, normally I would use this one, but I don't have my class list yet, so I can't go ahead and start putting my students in. So I'm just going to use my demo class um, so you guys can see kind of what to do. So if I go into the demo class, um, all of your classes will look the same. It'll just be whether or not you have more students or what the name of your class is. So you have your classroom, um, stories, which is another tab, and then messages. So first we'll start with classroom. So right now you can see that I have four students in here and I just made up family member names. So to add in more students, you would obviously click. Um, I personally like to use first and last names, um, but you could do just their first name if you want. So let's just put in someone. And then I'll put in my cat's name and my dog's name. So there, now I have, I added in students. So you would just save and then you can see that it <clears throat> added in more names. So to give positive dojos, um, you would obviously just click on the student and then you have positive and needs work would be the negative. So these three positives and these three negatives come standard on Class Dojo, and you can change those. So to change those, you're going to go up here to Settings, and you're going to go to Edit Class. Now this is where you have your class details. If you want to change an icon, you can. What grade you teach. Um, you have your students, so there you can also add more students. Parents, so it says I've connected zero of the parents. Um, I'll go into more about how you can, can connect them in a minute. You have the skills, so this is where you can change the dojos. So we need to add on um, being respectful. And then see now it showed up. I'm going to add another one. Being safe. And let's just do being responsible. <clears throat> now in my class, I personally like to have, like say read for homework. Because I really like my kids to read and they want to try and earn. So read for homework. You can also ch change the point value. So it's saying right now it's one. You can only have a max of five points. Me, I like to make read for homework higher just so it kind of helps promote that and hopefully they do. So you can change it. Um, maybe that's not as important to you or maybe something else is. You can also change the icons of what they are. So if they were reading for homework, you know, maybe I might put um, a book, okay? And then you can save it. Same with needs work. So you have all of your three, your um, ones that came standard with Class Dojo. And then you can see that it's like negative one, negative one. So you can also add a skill. So maybe if they're, um, if they're a bucket dipper, okay? And I had this down in my class last year and that was worth a heavy point. That was a negative five. So that's like if they're um, being disrespectful to a friend or whatever, I weighted that higher. And again, you can change the icon. So for that, <clears throat> I might do like a thumbs down because they're not being very nice. Okay, so you can change the iPad or the, um, the point value. Um, and then you also have another tab up here called sharing. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of this and then now say if I wanted to give myself a point, <clears throat> then I'm, I'm going to give myself a point because I'm on task. So then I would get a positive point. Now you just heard that ding. 
and the students start to know the sound. So I highly recommend having the, your sound up whenever you're doing your dojo. Um, so say if Tig, he is being, he's off task. So there's also a negative sound that goes along with it. Um, so then you can also go over here to view reports. And you can see. So you can see that I've had 100%. Um, Tig's had a zero. John's had a zero. And it'll break it down what they got positives and negatives for. And um, you can also view it in a spreadsheet. So that would be great to take to an SBIT if you needed to for a student. Um, I don't know if this thing, it'll open. You can also take attendance too on Class Dojo. Um, I'm waiting for the Excel to open. So I guess it breaks it down based on the, on their um, like whatever you have whatever you have up here like being on task off task things like that and then you, they would also have your attendance up there too so that's kind of nice because then you can take that to SBIT or I personally like the donut um, instead of the spreadsheet so then you could print this out and see and it goes this week you can change. The, all the time, last month, things like that. So you can you can see see that, and then like I said, you can also take their attendance. Um, to take attendance, it's obviously right down here. So say if Molly wasn't here today, it turns them red. Now say if they came in later, it turned them yellow. So this is a nice tool, especially if you give a whole class. And they're, say if Molly wasn't there and you didn't mark them absent, they would get a dojo. So I always use the attendance so then that way I can know who's here and who's not. Um, so the whole class, obviously, if you're not singling a student out um, or you're only giving a dojo to one student, you can do the whole class and then say the whole class is being respectful. So then now everyone got a point for being respectful. You don't have to go in and individually give each student one. Um, I liked to do this too. Like if you saw um, students working in groups and you could do a select multiple. So maybe I'm going to do Heather and Brian. I'm going to give them points for being responsible. So you can do two at a time also. You can do however many you want at a time. Um, the random down here is a great tool I like to use for um, calling on students or if you're picking, you know, like a lucky duck like I used to do in my classroom or just someone who's going above and beyond, um, you can randomize it and it'll it'll just pull up someone and then you can give them a, a, do, a dojo point. <clears throat> um, the timer is easy. It's just either a stopwatch or a countdown. Um, I didn't use this too much in my class uh, just because whenever you have all of your students up here, you can't really click on the student if you wanted to give them, excuse me, a um, a point so and then and then you have the class QR code down here so it's very easy to use it looks exactly like this on your iPad or on your smartphone um, so now I'm gonna go up here where you see where you see groups so you have students these are individuals and then you can make your own group so last year and this year I do um, <clears throat> tables or table points so you could also do um, like the red table and then you're gonna put these these four students there so then whenever you're giving out table points you can give 
your table point for being on task. And then it also goes on them on theirs individual. So it's it's not just points for the group. It'll also go to each student on their on here. Um, okay, so some of you may have noticed that when you do click on this on a student, there's something new that Dojo added, and it's called Stories. So up here it says View April Stories, and you can add a photo, add a post. So if you viewed my story, you're not going to really see anything yet because I haven't I haven't posted anything. So the way that I would use this in class is one of two ways. One, if you have a class story, this would be like um, we all dressed up for Halloween and you took a class picture. Or you go down to the collaboratory and you do um, something down there and you want to take pictures and share with parents. So you could do that. So like we could do... Um, Halloween dress up day and then I would post a picture I don't have a picture to post obviously but you could you could do that and then whenever that happens you're gonna kind of like Facebook and Instagram and all that parents can like it parents can comment on it um, if you edit the post you would change that's nice because in remind you can't edit the post so you can um, you can edit that <clears throat> Now, if you, if we go back, let me go back here and go back to my demo class. Down here it says class QR code. Now, I recommend printing this out and then giving it to your parents so then they can go on here. So the way that you use the class code, I remember I said I would use this one of two ways. One would be me sharing things that are happening in class and then two, the students can post things on there too. So you would have this QR code hanging up in your classroom somewhere. And for example, last year I used the Seesaw app. And so when my students were at a center that um, didn't have a worksheet, but it was still a skill that they were working on and I wanted to make sure that they understood it, they would get an iPad and then they would scan the QR code, which when they do, it opens up to a list of the students in the class. They would click on their name, take a picture, and then they can upload it. So then while you're working with a small group or, um, or whatever, and your other students are in a center or doing independent work that you're not necessarily going to grade you can still check to make sure that they know that they understand that skill you don't have to use this it it might sound overwhelming i personally liked it um i know my kids loved uploading their work um and then parents can also see that too and i'm pretty sure if it's like the remind app you can um, leave feedback for the students. So say if you're working on multiplication or whatever and the, the, the student isn't getting it, then maybe you could say like keep working on this at home or the other way if they're really getting it, great job. And that way the parents can also see. Um, so that's how that works. So you would just print out the class code sheet and then when you do, it's gonna download And then when you open it, you would I would just print this page out and I would hang it on my whiteboard in class and I would let the kids know that's where you're going to scan to go into your dojo story. So that takes care of that. So I pretty much went over everything down here. Now I'm going to go in how we do messages. So there are aren't any parents invited. Um, so you can invite parents one of two ways. One, you can click the get the invites and then it says download and print. So it's gonna prepare your invites. 
again it's going to download and it tells you exactly what to do so this is instructions for me and then this is how you're gonna stay connected to my class so you can set up a new account if you're if they're existing then this is what they would type in um, this is for this the student which I don't think I would have the students join I would just have the parents but then each kid so then here's Brian's so then it would go to go to his and my plan is to have these printed out <clears throat> So then on Meet the Teacher Day, they will be in their packets ready to go and they can go ahead and get um, logged in and invited. Now, if you have a parent who's a slacker and they don't, um, they don't do the invite on, them, on their own, then you can go in and I can, it says parent email or phone number. So then you can type it in and then sit it that way. Um, last year, out of my 20 students, I had 18, I think, that were that were connected. So, of course, you're going to have those parents who just aren't, you know, on board with all of this. But that's okay. So, on the messaging, um, let me see where parents... Um, maybe under account settings yes so under account settings one you can change your photo you have your email address what the role is whatever messaging um, quiet hours okay so I know that was one of the big things about how teachers didn't want notifications well first of all you need to set it in the beginning letting your parents know like are you going to be the type of teacher who's going to respond to messages 24 7 or are you going to have office hours I'm gonna have office hours because I don't want to be responding to messages at 6 o'clock or at 9 30 in the morning on Saturday like I had some last year so I'm going to turn this on and then you can set it so remember now this is quiet hours so my quiet hours would be from I'm going to say from 5 until 7 a.m. Those are my quiet hours. Okay, so it says message push notifications are muted on your mobile devices during these quiet hours. So at 5 o'clock when I'm home, you can make it earlier if you want, but from 5 o'clock until the next morning, I will not have notifications same with this they're muted on your mobile devices Saturday and Sunday if that's what you want to if you don't want to be bothered on the weekend turn that on now that doesn't mean that parents might not message you it just means that you won't get the notification so that's how you can have that on there um, same if you don't want parents commenting on your class stories turn that off if you just want it to be um, somewhere that you can post and they're not going to respond back, turn it off or keep it on. Um, let's see what's in advance. Okay, so that's just showing how many devices you use. Um, the message history, oh, that's good. Because if you go to um, an ESPE or a meeting or a conference and say if you have a parent who, you know, is they're having an issue, then you can, you can see your exchanges. Or if you need to um, put conference notes in uh, a child's folder or whatever, you can download their exchange between there because I know last year when I used the Remind app and the Dojo app, this is how I communicated with a lot of parents just because I had a lot of working parents who couldn't always make it in. So that would be good. You can down, download that too. And then obviously if you want to delete your account, which we don't want to do right now. So that's an advanced setting is the messaging. So that'll be how you turn on your quiet hours. Um, lastly, 
is the sharing, which is something that we need to do this year with guidance and um, admin. And there's a whole list that will be sent to you about who you need to share yours with. Um, so if I go to, where was it? Edit class. Okay, so students, obviously, that's how you would add. Parents, that's where you're going to invite. Skills, you can change. Don't forget, you can change the icons too and the point value. Sharing. So this is where you're going to add. So if I was going to add in Jessica, that I would put in hers. And then I would invite. And then you need to do this with the list that they're going to give you. So then that way they will also have access to your class to hand out positive and negative dojos. To reset the bubbles. So we're going to reset the, we're going to reset the dojo points. I call them bubbles or um, whatever at the end of two weeks. So to do that, you would go to settings and then right here it says reset bubbles. So then I would go ahead, reset bubbles. I'm going to select all and then now they're reset. Okay. So again, very easy. Um, display settings. So you can change your avatar size. You can make it really small. You can make it really big. I kind of like it somewhere on the bigger side just because I, I can't see that far away. So if, if it was smaller, I wouldn't be able to see it on the TV. And then I personally like it by last name just because that's how I line my kids up. And so I just get in the habit of looking by everything for last name or you could do by first name, whatever. The point bubbles, um, you could do a combined total so it would show one value in the little bubble up here or you could do separate totals so then you're going to see how many positives and how many negatives or you can don't you you don't show the points at all I like to have um I like to have the, the points and I usually do the combined that way um I can just look up and then it's not so intimidating for the kids to see all like if they're getting reds or whatever so it's just it's easier for me and play sounds you don't have to play sounds but like I said it really does condition the um the kids kind of like a whole Pavlov thing to to know so they don't even need to look at the screen or they don't need you to tell them that you got a, a positive or a negative they'll just hear the sound and they'll know that someone got a positive or someone got a negative dojo and then same with award notification so that's whenever you get a positive dojo and it shows up down here on the screen like april plus one for being on task if you don't want that to pop up every time you don't have to you can turn you can turn those off and save it, and then when I get it, it doesn't pop up anymore. So I'll show you again what it looks like if you if it does. So then if I popped it up here, see how it popped up on the screen. So completely up to you. Um, I believe that you can change the avatar. Yes, you can. So sometimes, um, teachers make this a reward that the student then gets to change their avatar. I didn't, and I didn't go in and change each student to whatever I wanted to. It's just whatever it generated, it generated. Um, there's also critters, so this must be new too. Those are kind of silly looking. And then you can create a new set. I don't even know how you do do that but anyway so I just stick with the monsters it's cute um, and then I'm going to go to one more thing I'm going to open a new tab and um, I'm going to actually go to classdojo.com so the classdojo.com there's a lot of resources so if you go up here and click resources 
you have a lot of resources that you can that are accessible to you. So for teachers, um, it there's a presentation here that if you want to show it back to school night, um, and a letter for the parents, um, and then this is pretty cool too. You can also if you want you can download the decoration pack and then you can you know spruce up your classroom with the whole monster theme um, so let's see what's in here I bet some of this stuff is really cute whoa They didn't really organize that nicely. Um, so in accessories, so this is kind of nice. Um, I did this last year for a student at the end of the week. I would um, give them a certificate saying that they had like the most points for the week. Um, you can write a note. Those are stickers, a hall pass, um, bathroom pass. Let's go to the posters. They totally did not... How can I? There we go. That was my fault. Um, so poster creativity, helping others. So you can print out these little posters if you want and put them around your classroom. Um, a VIP. I know I was talking to Melissa Simpkins and she was saying something about having um, like the top three students with the most dojo points and then that way it's kind of like a little bit of healthy competition um, you could do something like that and, and post who's in kind of like who's in the lead in a way um, let me yeah. that's just the logo individual monster so if you wanted to print these out and maybe put them on a bulletin board and you know, you can, or you can make a little um, sheet with them. Same with monster artwork. It's really cute. So yeah, there's things, coloring sheets that the kids can do. That could be like a prize or something. So there's stuff that you can put around your classroom for, um, for decorations. <clears throat> and then um, any resources for parents too. Maybe they might have a QA. and a um, you know, just stuff that they can they can find here. I'm going to go back to the other website because I want to show you one more thing. Um, last year, I watched these big ideas with my class, and they loved them. I'd say the primary kids would like it, probably not the intermediate. But um, they, they come with a discussion guide, and you can see all of the episodes. So they have two seasons and it goes up to episode three. And it just kind of talks about um, like trying your hardest and um, how the brain is a muscle and not giving up to and, and trying harder to kind of help make your brain grow. And it, it's just a really cute story. Um, so that's something that I would just recommend maybe like in the beginning of school to, to introduce the dojo. Um, but it's super easy to use and um, I would be more than happy to help if you have any more questions. Sorry if I mumbled or went out on a rant or a tangent, but baby brain's a real thing and sometimes you forget what you're going to say. So, uh, sorry. Oh, and then this up here is your notifications, the little bell. So that um, if you have like a, a, a parent message or something like that, then you're going to see something up, up here like a one or whatever. So it just depends on how many messages you have. So, um, so yeah. And if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. And um, I think that this year is going to be great using Class Dojo. And um, I'm excited to see um, how it has an impact on our behavior in class. All right. See you guys uh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm.